Chairs Griffith and Rogers, uh, Ranking Members Castor and Pallone, and members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. <clears throat> On my desk, there's a handwritten note from a patient's family thanking me for saving their daughter's life with a liver transplant. I keep it there to remind me of the awesome privilege and responsibility I have as a transplant surgeon to serve patients in their time of greatest need. The true heroes in the story of transplantation are not physicians, however, but rather are the donors and families who give selflessly in what may be the darkest moment of their lives, patients suffering from organ failure waiting for a phone call that may never come, and the thousands of organ donation and transplant professionals who bridge the gap between them. I'd like to speak with you today about <coughs> that has let these heroes down. The OPTN contract has been held by UNOS for nearly 40 years. And the men and women of UNOS during this time have done some life-saving work to facilitate the smooth operation of our transplant system. Another key role in the transplant system is occupied by organ procurement organizations, or OPOs, which are federally designated nonprofit organizations tasked with overseeing all aspects of organ donation within their territory. Dedicated OPO professionals meet families in their darkest moments and work to bring hope from tragedy. Over here. Um, dedicated OPO professionals meet families in their darkest moments and work to bring hope from tragedy. They are the bedrock upon which our system rests, and I offer them my sincerest thanks and gratitude. The transplant system is built upon trust, but sadly, this trust has been broken by a broken and, and corrupted OPTN. Until recently, OPOs were allowed to self determine which deaths within their territory represented potential donors leaving the door open for manipulation of the performance metrics by which they were evaluated. Although CMS reformed this metric in 2022, the SRTR contractor refuses to recognize this reform measure, and OPO lobbyists continue to oppose it through fear. The OPTN has similarly been allowed to control the collection and dissemination of data, essentially blinding HRSA to their true performance. The whole system lacks sufficient oversight and accountability, resulting in actions that are abusive and harmful to patients. I've had an OPO administrator recommend I proceed with organ procurement despite legitimate concerns that the donor was still alive. I've had a 21-year-old patient dying from liver failure have a perfect organ taken away from her by an OPO that was unwilling to provide an extra hour to find a plane to transport the organ. Our complaint in this instance went unanswered. Unfortunately, stories such as these are not isolated instances. At present, approximately 20% of kidneys are allocated out of sequence meaning that patients with higher priority on the list were never given an opportunity to receive these organs. While this practice may reflect the best effort of an OPO to avoid organ wastage, the epidemic of out-of-sequence allocation represents a workaround for failed policies that were pushed through a system rife with corruption. I've read hundreds of pages of emails in which high-ranking UNOS and OPTN officials, along with a small group of OPO and transplant physician leaders, schemed to undo years of policy development to push through their own agenda instead. In the course of this process, individual OPTN executive committee members instructed their supposed regulators at HRSA on how to respond to threatened lawsuits in a manner that favored their interests. Those who opposed this group were subject to retaliation and intimidation. People in large swaths of the country were derided by expletives by those in power by the OPTN and UNOS. And patients suffering from organ failure who had not made it to the wait list were dismissed as unimportant. Rather than being censured or removed from office for this behavior, the then CEO of UNOS was instead issued an official commendation from the OPTN for his work. The OPTN Modernization Act was intended to right this ship. However, the process continues to be undermined and the same actors remain in power. For example, the current president of the now independent OPTN board has a history of seeking to intimidate and retaliate against those who do not toe the OPTN party line, including those testifying to Congress as I am today and those who are unable to testify out of fear of further retaliation. The HRSA officials who so willingly did the bidding of the OPTN remain in office, hindering effective change. With such resistance to reform, our transplant system can never reach its true potential, and it's patients who are paying the price. The OPTN has lost its way. Congress has taken a right step in the right direction, but has not yet gone far enough, and we need you to go further. Now, let me be clear. I'm not asking that Congress make specific medical policy, but what I am asking for is a modernized National Organ Transplant Act, which, over, which gives HRSA the tools to ensure that regulation and oversight are impartial, data-driven, and transparent. Only then can we realize, fully realize our mandate to serve all Americans suffering from organ failure. Thank you. <laughs> 